Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Wednesday. It is the 29th day of September, year of our Lord, 2021. I do pray this finds you well on this muggy fall evening. The air conditioning is actually running tonight. I was hoping we'd be kind of done with that. Anyway, uh, remember youth group on Sunday uh, for all our young adults and they can certainly bring friends. First hour is apologetic, second hour is fellowship, fun, getting to know one another, treats, things like that. Uh, I know we are visiting other churches and there's already some interest in spec uh, expressed from a few other churches in the community of joining us on Sunday evening. So again, we hope to see a number of youth there. Also, we're still looking for adult volunteers as leaders for that, particularly that second hour uh, for the fellowship and the and the fun for the for the young adults to get to know each other to guide those activities, we have four or five right now. We could use a few more. You have to submit to a background check, things like that. Uh, but uh, and the church will pay for that, of course. But but anyway, if you're interested in that, message me privately, and we'll be happy to get you trained and get you on board with all that. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Now today, the 29th of September, is the Feast of St. Michael's and All Angels. We're going to continue with the lectionary today and stay with that. The daily lectionary, so we're going to read from Matthew. Uh, you can go to the Facebook page, and earlier in the day I posted the service from this morning from Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne, and it's a service, it's a very good one today, it was a great sermon today, uh, when the focus was the Feast of St. Michael's and All Angels, so that I, I commend you to that, if you'd like to listen on that, it's there, uh, you'll see it in the, in the feed, but we're going to stick with the daily lectionary, and we're going to read from Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 48, continuing where we left off last night, in the Sermon, to the Mount, sermon to the, on the Mount. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was said also, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. But do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from ev the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. 
And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore you must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And that is the Gospel of the Lord. Now, this is again the Sermon on the Mount, picking up where we left off last night after the Beatitudes and, and uh, hearing about uh, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light. And Jesus begins to say what, what that looks like. Now, we can, as Lutherans, fall into the trap of, well, here he gives us this list and we can't do it, therefore we have your Savior. True. That's true. It, I, you know, can any one of us look at this list and think, you know, I, I, I can do this? I mean, which one of us hasn't lusted? I mean, I, I, I talk to everybody, except for the very, very young, and, and we talk about these things, you know, and, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you some stories if I had more time about how I, when I teach adult confirmation, usually it's uh, couples often will get into that one, and it's quite, it's quite entertaining. Uh, you know, who hasn't called somebody a name? And I'm not talking about a bad, like, you know, we consider a bad name, but like fool, that seems like nothing to us, you know. You know uh, and, and how this ends, you know, about loving. So, yeah, we can certainly look at this and say, man, you know, I, I, I can't do this. But here's the thing. It's not just that. This is what we should do as Christians. And, and we, you know, when we look at this and realize we can't do it, we still want to. And we still try. And with the Spirit of God living in us as Christians, with Christ himself living in us as Christians, we do do some of these things sometimes, and once in a while we get it right. might not be even aware, aware of that half the time, and granted, sometimes even when we get it right, there's a little sin in there, you know, especially if you're sort of paying attention, you know, oh, what's in it for me? Yeah, that's there. You know, but we see, okay, think about this last thing. And it's funny how this sort of ratchets up, ratchets up, ratchets up about loving. You know, so you get to love your enemy. You, will, you have heard it said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Okay? Uh, when I teach, again, I, because you know, there's so many good examples just in the world around us. Uh, I just did chapel over across the river uh, for, I think the oldest group was seventh grade. And within the, and we were, commemorating Jonah that day, but in the in the context of my little sermon for them in the morning school day, I you know, asked particularly the smaller kids, I said, you know, who do you sit with at lunch? You know, they sit with their friends. And who do you share your cookies and your 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 your, your uh, crunchy uh, Cheetos with? You know, the the, the, the puffy the puffy ones that no, no not good. The the crunchy ones. <laughs> I'm your friend, yeah. And you share those with your friends. How about your enemy? Would you go sit with the kid that picks on you? Would you go sit with the kid that gives you a hard time, or just is weird, you know, is a pariah? We we've all seen those horrible experiences in school, where you know some kid is made to be the class pariah, and it is miserable for them. Maybe they look a little weird, or they have weird mannerisms, and then all of us, in one way or another. So it's difficult to love your enemy. It's easy to love your friends. And that's what the Gentiles do. That's what the outsiders do. You know, we love those who love us. You know, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And he says, well, you know. He loves the good, they get to eat. Uh, you know, he also loves the evil, they get to eat. He sends them rain. Think about it. People who persecute the church are eating today. People who hate what you believe and what I'm saying right now are eating today. Why? The mercy of God. The mercy of God. He loves them. He wants them to be with them. We need to love them too. So do not even the tax collectors love those who, who can reward them for sharing that love. So he goes on to say, no, uh, you know, you do this. You, you love those who are your enemies. You pray for them. You know, if they need something, you help them. 
Uh, uh, you, you, you know, if we, there might be somebody who has a despicable lifestyle next to us that we know we can't uphold, and maybe they're, who knows what's going on, you know. And but if you saw something going on at their house, you'd help them. An ambulance, call an ambulance, call the police, call the fire department. You know, you would help them. We have to. So, getting back to the overarching theme of this Sermon on the Mount here, we, it's not just, oh, you know, here's this list of law that I can't do. I mean, we don't look at the Ten Commandments that way. I and mean, really, this is a, 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 a ex, an expansion of the Ten Commandments. What it looks like to live the Ten Commandments. This is what it looks like. That our hearts should be in line with our actions. That's we fail miserably there. That that uh, we shouldn't be looking at things that. Uh, uh, cause us to hate our enemies, etc. Uh, you know, we, and think about oaths. I, I mean, talk about that one. You know. I'm always a little, I, I mean, and I think I've been a pastor for a very long time. I know I've been a pastor, but sometimes I think maybe uh, uh, too long is the word that's coming to my, my phrase, uh, coming to my mouth, but that's not the right word. But, you know, you just get to know people well. And you get to read people well. That, uh, there's a lot of professions that are like that because that's part of your job is to be able to read, to kind of read between the lines of what they're saying, to kind of, not that you're psychoanalyzing, but just so how to help them and how to minister to them. And I'm always a little, when people start stacking up words like, like well, you know, they'll, they'll be talking, say, well, you know, I truly, you know, or um, really this time. And, and, I, and I just almost cynically think, well, what was all that stuff before? Before you got to the really now, and truly, I'm truly, I'm telling you the truth now. You know, well, what was all that stuff back there? You know, the, the last 15 minutes was that? Should I ignore all that? Let your and I, and I think that sort of tips our hands at times. You know that maybe we hedge things. Not that we're over liars, but we don't want to tell the whole truth because uh, sometimes that paints us in a bad light. We don't want to tell the whole truth. We tell partial truths, which is a lie. It really is. You're holding back. You know what you're doing. And then we get to the, but truly now, you know, I'm telling you the truth now. Well, okay, I'm going to be a little skeptical. That comes with the job. doesn't mean I don't love you. It just means I'm trying to help you. Now, what is Christ here? You know, don't, don't, it doesn't mean we can't take oaths. He says, you shall not swear falsely, uh, but perform what you have done. You know, so when you make an oath, mean it. You stand before God's altar, mean it, or don't say it. Uh, when I do confirmation, I take the kids, I say, or adults or children, uh, I say, this is what you're going to say. Can you say this? And if they have reservations, we talk about it some more. I bring the parents in with the kids, and, and I ask them in front of them, and sometimes we have a dialogue about it. You know, why say it? You know, don't do it because, oh, this is what our family does. Do it because you mean it. You know, don't, don't get married because you think it's the right thing to do, although it might be the right thing to do, or there's a shotgun in your back. It's a horrible example, I know. You know, you know, if you're going to get married, be ready for the commitment. Be ready for the you know the goodness and the and, and the badness and the and the and the hurting and the and the sickness and the and ultimately the death. You know, otherwise, why do it if you're not if you're not going to make that commitment? You know, even thinking about it, Grant, we can't always see what life's going to present to us, but but do it. Okay, so I'm getting long in the tooth here. Just let your yes be yes and your no be no. Just speak the truth. You know, if, you, if you're going to ask somebody to marry, marry you, make sure you're ready. Or don't ask them. You know, we're reading Elmer Gantry now. This is why this is in my mind. Uh, uh, you know, don't, don't, and this is kind of a pet peeve of mine, you know, that people say, I'm going to, you know, we'll be there, pastor, we'll do this, and we'll do that, and then they don't show up. And then they're going to, then why did you say you were going to be there? You know, don't say to your brothers and sisters in the church that you're going to do something. And I, it does hurt, by the way. You know, and you feel kind of like a second-class citizen, and, and you know that you're what you know you're doing is not that important and stuff like that. So just let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Love your enemies. You know, treat each other with respect and dignity. This is what Christians do. This is how we are the salt and the light. Okay, uh, fourteen minutes in. Okay, let's confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we do pray that you would bless the homes of your people with your peace. Mothers, fathers, children, that they would live together according to your created order and the harmony that you bless. Strengthen us and our voices in the community that we may uphold this gift and cherish this gift and speak, even as it's so often broken among us, speak to defend it. Heavenly Father, be as always with those who must weigh, who must raise their children alone. Uphold them. Strengthen them, keep them from falling into loneliness and despair, but may they find a light in their children, and may we as neighbors help them as we are able. Especially this day we pray for the family of Brock, who you, in your, in your mysterious ways, saw fit to call from this valley of sorrows as a very young man. We pray your blessing upon his family, that you bless them with your peace as they try to make sense of this, as they question and wonder that you would be there, that you would uphold them, that you'd surround them with people who are slow to speak, quick to hear, uh, and and just listen to their, their sorrow and their tragedy and pray for them. Heavenly Father, keep all of us mindful as we are faced with so many things we don't understand, that this is not the world we are living for, that we are we are living for for the world to come, a joyous time where there'll be a reunion with all those who have gone before us in the faith, Brock, and all those that we know and love that have gone before us, that they may uh, that we look forward to that joyful reunion before your throne. We give you thanks this day for the ordering of men, women, people, and angels as that separate created order, that you have created them to, to be uh, your ministers, your servants on our behalf. So we give thanks for these angels that you command and that um, work to keep us safe and to uphold us and to protect us. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I have no idea if uh, the family that I prayed for just a few minutes ago listens to this at all. That's not important. But um, uh, with them in mind, I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn number six, 763. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trial should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. He lives, O oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in part, but the whole, is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more, 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when our faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trumpet shall sound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. I bid you a pleasant evening. Good night.